Sarah Mullis back. So let's get an update on all the latest business news this hour. And as you've been hearing, it's a terrible day on those markets. The continued slide in oil prices, worries about global growth. That's really unsettled investors. The FTSE 100 currently trading down around 3%. The German market also down. And over in Asia, the Nikkei, that closed down almost a 4%. That number, they're slightly receding. It's biggest one-day drop since late September. More coming your way just now. And the UK jobless rate, that fell to 5.1% in the three months to November, its lowest rate since October 2005. Well, we're finding out what that could mean for interest rates. And more jobs are being lost in the UK steel industry. This morning, steel company Sheffield Forge Masters, that announced it's going to cut up to 100 jobs and another blow for the crisis hit industry. Earlier this week, Tata Steel announced more than 1,000 cuts. So stock markets worldwide have tumbled with investors unsettled by the continued slide in oil prices and fears about the impact on global growth with the world's second largest economy, China, still saying signs of slowing. Well, all the major European indices, they've been down and continue to trade down all around roughly minus 3%. A trend continued uh, from falls that we saw overnight in Asia. And over on Wall Street, stocks have joined the route there, falling nearly 2% at the open. On Tuesday, early gains there were erased by the tumble in U.S. crude. Well, Nella Torfik is on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for us, and she's gauging trader sentiment. Uh, which one trader next to me called it a bloodbath. Uh, so a lot of unease here on the floor about, again, oil prices dragging the markets down. Investors don't really have a lot to be optimistic about at the moment. We just heard yesterday from the IMF warning that global financial markets may be overreacting to the oil price and the slowdown in China. Uh, and the feel here from traders is that the markets are just going to continue to be volatile until we hit a floor with those oil prices. The key question, of course, when that will be. Uh, the S&P has already this year shed 8% in dollar terms. We're talking $1.4 trillion. Uh, and Alice, I mean, 2016 has been off to a rough start. Uh, and traders here just kind of thinking when that kind of point when the markets will start to stabilize again will be. Now, we've had uh, another snapshot today of the state of the economy this morning. And it is on the whole Good news, the jobless rate fell to 5.1%. That's its lowest level in almost a decade. It was at this level in October of 2005, so crucially before the financial crisis. But average earnings, excluding bonuses, they rose by just 1.9%. That's its lowest rate since February and down from 2% in the quarter below. But here, that's how the uh, unemployment figure looks over the last uh, five years, or that little graph that you saw a bit earlier. A slow and Steady fall is what we've been seeing, despite what the governor of the Bank of England yesterday called slack in the system. Well, we asked Vicky Redworth, chief economist at Capital Economics, what she thinks of the figures. It was a real mixed bag today. We had very good news on the activity side of things, with unemployment coming down further, employment growth still very strong, the number of people claiming unemployment benefit dropping. But then we did have this week wage growth. The upside of that, of course, is that that means the Bank of England will probably keep interest rates on hold for longer than they would otherwise have done, because as Mr Carney said yesterday, wage growth is a key thing they're looking at in terms of determining whether inflation is going to pick up over the next few months. Vicky Redford there. Now, I want to tell you about power firm E.ON because it's cut standard gas prices for residential customers by 5.1%. The firm says that's the equivalent of £32 off an average annual bill. It's the first time in six months that any of the big six energy firms have cut their prices. Sticking with that theme, oil giant Shell's reported a sharp fall in profits just a week before shareholders vote on its planned takeover of small arrival BG. Now, for the fourth quarter, it expects profits of less than half the £4.2 billion that it made last year. Video streaming company Netflix, that's saying that its customer numbers rose more than expected last quarter. The firm said it added a record 5.59 million customers in the three months of December, bringing total member numbers to almost 75 million. And lastly, Microsoft, that's saying it's going to put a billion dollars worth of cloud computing power in the hands of organizations that it deems are working for the public good. Uh, the resources will be shared out over the next three years to about 70,000 non-profit groups and researchers. The idea is to make vast amounts of data much more accessible. Right, I'll be back in an hour's time to see how European markets have ended for the session. So join me for that if you can. Back to you, Alice, thank you very much. Thank you.
Now, a tale of gothic horror, a Victorian melodrama, the story of a heroic World War II pilot and the life of a German scientist and a collection of poetry. They're all vying for this year's Costa Book of the Year Award. In a special series of Meet the Author, Nick Hyam's been talking to the writers in line for the prize. Today, he's with the poet Don Patterson to discuss his collection, 40 Sonnets.